Okie dokie, it is recording. Hello, everybody. Hello, people watching the recorded version. Hello, live people. Nice to see everybody. This is the, I think the 11th now, 11th How to Teach Foreign Languages session. And if you're watching this for the first time, this is basically a weekly segment, a weekly uh, workshop, I suppose, where, we, where I, I share how we, how I teach and how my teachers teach at the Calgary Language Nerds. I'm going to do a quick screen share here. Um, here we go. Share screen. Perfect. Should be able to see momentarily. Okay. So very, very quick intro on me. Most of you probably already know who I am, but very, very fast in case you don't, you don't, you don't know who I am. From Calgary, I love learning Calgary, which is a city in Canada. I love learning languages. I speak five languages right now. And a lot of my language learning comes from my travels. I'm a big, big traveler. I've been to uh, over 100 different cities in 15 different countries. And currently I speak English. Currently I speak English, French, Spanish, Mandarin, and then Gujarati. I would like to add Arabic, Russian, and Hindi to the list at a minimum. And then maybe some others later down the road. We'll see. Um, in university, I graduated in 2014. I did a double major in French and Spanish. Um, upon graduating, I didn't really work in languages initially. I actually ran a window cleaning business, which was a very big learning experience. A lot of the things that I do today in my current business, which is the Calgary Language Nerds, it comes from things that I learned in that business. So that's a very, very important, just prof professionally anyway, it's a very important part of my life. Um, and yeah, I really, really like learning languages as well as teaching languages. So I've been teaching languages for a number of years, and I've been teaching has been a part of my life ugh, for a long, long, long time. Uh, even growing up as a kid, like my mom's a teacher, so I would just hear all sorts of different stories about her from her school and everything and things that she experienced and how she solved different problems, how she taught such and such concept and this, that, the other thing. So even as a child, like teach language teaching was a big part of my life. And then now I, I teach various languages for my work. So, um, so there's a very fast introduction. I'm going to share a different tab. And today's session is going to be very, very practical. We're going to be, <clears throat> I'm going to be sharing my, some of my favorite teaching resources. There's quite a few. These don't even scratch the surface of the number of resources I use, but there's some of my, some of my favorite resources. Uh, some of the resources are very language specific. So they're like for a specific language. And then some of them are more like general and can be adapted to like a lot of different languages. So you should be able to see my screen. Let me double check if you can. Um, yes, my screen is showing. Good. So the first one here is a Spanish, is a Spanish specific resource. Um, I'm going to put, oh, by the way, in the YouTube video, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put all of these links in the description so you can access them. For people watching live, I'll just send them afterwards. I'll make sure I put them all in the chat so you can save them. So this is a, a Spanish resource. It's called the Big Book of Spanish Verb Drills. It basically is what it sounds like. It's a 452-page book online. It's a free PDF that has a bunch of different Spanish verb drills. So I'll show you if we scroll down. So if you look here, here's like the table of contents, you know, chapter, go to chapter one, here we go. Right, regular AR verbs in the present tense, page two. Stem changing ER verbs in the present tense, page eight. Stem changing ER verbs in the present tense, O U O T U E, page 13. Every grammar concept is in this book. And there's like drills upon drills upon drills upon drills with answer keys. So this is a, I'm a huge fan of this one for Spanish, um, for people that are looking, the people that need, um, or for people that are looking for extra just conjugation practice, just to get those rote kind of drills into their head. Really, really good resource. Um, you can find these for a variety of languages, not just Spanish. Like if you were to literally go into Google and search whatever language, Italian, uh, verb conjugation PDF, or like all verb conjugations in Italian work workbook, 
like you'll have to Google around and try different search queries. You might have to try like 15 different variations of search queries and have to scroll around a bit depending on the language. That's literally how I found this book. I just did a bunch of Googling until I found what I was looking for. And now I've saved it, so I have it. Um, and you can find it for many languages that have conjugations. And so this is a huge resource, a very, very good resource. And you can use these for, you'll need to find a variation for other languages that have conjugations, but it's super useful. Here's a French version of it. I actually, this one I believe I shared in the previous video, but this one is called French Verb Drills, third edition. Um, um, very similar concept. So if we go just to the table of contents, here we go. Very similar, very similar concept. Regular verbs, page one. Infinitive, present indicative of regular ER verbs. Use of tense, present indicative of regular IR verbs and interrogative forms. It's kind of boring to be honest, not super, super uh, uh, engaging, but definitely for people that need that those drills, like really, really useful resource. So similar to Spanish, but this is obviously in French. Okay, so those are some language specific. Let's go to one that works for all languages. This one here, um, this website is a list, a huge list, mind you, a massive, like super long list, very, very long list of uh, conversation topics. They're all in English, but of course you could translate it or you could use it for any language. What I like about this website is the topics, this particular website has some reasonably complex topics. So for example, if we like look at, here's a couple examples, Pope John II, like that is really specific. And there's a whole list of questions about Pope John II. Maybe that's even too specific, even if we go a little bit, take a step back, like poverty, that's a pretty advanced topic. And there's gonna be lots of, lots of vocabulary and things in here that you don't know. What is poverty? What kinds of problems do poor people have? Why are people hungry? Do you feel sorry for people who live on the street? So for conversation classes, this is a great resource. Um, and no matter how advanced you are, I don't care how long you study the language, that you're going to find something here that you don't have the vocabulary for or the grammar knowledge for. Like You just don't really know how to talk about it. There are some easier topics too, like restaurants and eating out. So if you're working with like more intermediate students or beginner students, like Russia in the world, that's hilarious. Anyway, like if you're working with more, you know, beginner students, maybe you might pick something like restaurants and eating out, or maybe you'll pick like, um, let's see another easier topic, even like um, food and eating. That's another easier topic. Friends might be easier. If you're practicing the future tense, maybe you might pick the future category. You know, there's a lot, all sorts of things here. There's lots and lots and lots. Some are easier, some are harder. Um, so plan this can keep you busy this is uh, this is one of my favorite resources of all time there's a big shout out to the to logan logan teaches german for the calgary language nerds right now he teaches german for me he's the one who, who stumbled across this and he sent it to me oh one of my favorite resources ever i think there's actually more here too i haven't even clicked these other links what are these activities oh look at that that's not bad grammar quizzes this is for english that's not bad at all um, English. Ooh, what is this? Bilingual quizzes. I haven't looked at this website fully, actually, but this looks like a pretty good English resource as a whole. What about, go back here, what about things for teachers? What is that? Conversation questions, jokes, games, and activities. What do we have in here? Ooh, I haven't clicked through this website properly. Let's have a look at this. Look at all these activities. Wow. I'm gonna have to read through some of these myself. Look at this. I'm sure these are adaptable for a wide variety of different languages. I'm sure you can. Perfect. This might be the mother load of all resources, actually. I love it. Games, jokes, things for teachers. This is great. Even techniques. Oh, this doesn't look very, what is this? Anyway, I'll click around on my own time. You guys should definitely click around on this. Okay, so this is a great resource. I love this resource. I use it all the time. Okay. This is another all language resource. This is um, um, this is a website by this Saint, I don't know, Saint Gilles in French, or if it's Saint Giles or what language it's for, I don't know. Basically it's a description and a bit of a, a mini curriculum for different CEFR levels. In fact, you know what, let's come back to this one. Let's show this website first. This one is better to show first. This is the CEFR. If you're unfamiliar with what the CEFR is, the CEFR is a, is a 
is a um, a framework to kind of determine how fluent someone is in a language. There are six levels in the in the CEFR. There goes from A1 and A2. Those are the two beginner levels. You then have B1, B2. Those are the two intermediate levels. Then you have C1, C2, which are the two advanced levels. Um, this website here is a bit of a self-assessment. It's a great way to very quickly see how fluent someone is in different aspects of, of a language, whether it's reading level, speaking level. It's available in different languages too. So if you want to read the table in Spanish, you can read in Spanish. If you want to read in Slovenian, Slovenian. It has English over here. So that's what the CEFR is. It's a list of six different levels. And I'll put this link as well so you guys can access this. And you can see the self-assessment checklist. So if we go back to this one, this organization has put together um, learner outcomes and kind of like mini curriculums for different levels of the CEFR. So let's actually switch this to an A1. Um, A1, here we go. So it puts in very simple terms, like what the student's able to do. Students can at this level can understand and use familiar everyday expressions and can and very basic phrases aimed at the satisfaction of needs, blah, 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 blah. It breaks down kind of what they have to be able to do. It even goes further than that. We kind of scroll down. It even tells you like what outcomes they have to be able to achieve. Direction, describing habits and routines, giving personal information, greetings, telling time, you know, vocabulary, food and drink, nationalities and countries, personal information, things in the town, verbs basic, right? It gives you some topics. Now, some of these might be English specific, right? Like if you look at the grammar section, right? Maybe something like, you know, maybe your language that you teach doesn't have going to, like I am going to do this. Maybe you don't have that grammar point, right? Or maybe you don't have modals, or maybe you don't have certain things, but still you can use a lot of these concepts, right? To, to plan out your lessons. Um, in order to access the different levels, you just change the URL. So change the A1 to an A2, hit enter, you get the A2 level. Change A1, A2 to a B1, you get the B1 level. Change it to a C2. Get a C2 level, right? So you get you can read whatever levels you want. Just change the URL. Just go in the URL up here. I'll zoom in and show you. Oh, can I zoom in? I can't zoom in. That's okay. You guys should be able to see it, I think. Pretty sure. In the URL, you change. Uh, let me see if you can see it, actually. I'm going to go to my screen viewer and see if we're able to see the URL. Yeah, you guys can. You guys can. Just change the URL. Change that C2 to whatever level you're looking for. OK, that's another resource I love. This one I'll show you momentarily. I'll show, well, let's do that one later. Let's do it, let's move it over. Okay, this is a YouTube channel that I like a lot. In fact, you're gonna see me in this picture. I'll zoom in. There I am, right there, and that's my face. <laughs> um, it's called Easy Languages. They do street, they do interviews of people um, on the street in, the tar in, ver in a wide variety of languages. So maybe we can look at the playlists. Looks like they have Swahili, they have English, Portuguese, Romanian, Italian, uh, Turkish, Catalan, Welsh. There's me, you can kind of see my face in there. English, I don't make their videos anymore, but I used to. I made a fair number of their English videos. You know, I think there's more than that too. I think there's his Russian, French, Greek, Italian, the Polish, so many, right? Uh, looks like there's 11 Hindi videos, Canton, six Cantonese videos. There's a lot. And they do these Vietnamese, they do these interviews with people on the street about a variety of different topics. Really good resource for listening comprehension, for vocabulary, for, um, for heck, could even be reading comprehension. There's a wide, there's a lot of things you can do with their videos. They even have like these super easy videos. Not all languages have it. But super easy ones are really for beginners. I particularly like the super easy French and Spanish. They're really good for beginners. I use them quite quite frequently. Super easy French and super easy Spanish. Um, but I'm sure there's others that are really good. Like I've never watched the Turkish one, so I don't know what they have. Like I haven't watched all of them, but it's a really good, really, really good channel. And I love them as a resource. Awesome teaching resource. Going to a French specific resource, um, it's a channel called Ali Sayel. Um, amazing for beginners as well as um, uh, 
um, beginners as well as I would say like upper beginner, low intermediate. She has, uh, let me show you here. Oh, here's her videos. Recently, she's been doing these, these series of qui est or qui sont, qui est Hergé, qui est Zao, qui est Artagnan, qui est Jeanne Mans, qui est blah, blah, blah. These are good for like upper beginners. They're like slow French and she describes who these people are in French history. Um, and you get to learn about French history and culture and you get to improve your French. It's really cool. But she also has, if we go to these playlists, uh, you got to kind of, uh, there's different, all sorts of different things, right? Film à voir, so movies to see. I particularly like all these seasons. Saison 4, saison 2, saison 3. Uh, where's saison 1? Saison 1. She tells these short little stories in French, and they're really good for beginner beginners in French. Amazing stories. She draws as she talks. There's subtitles. It's, yeah, amazing. And then she's got a great, her website's got some paid content too. One of my students, I think, has paid for it, and she loves it. Yeah, such a good under, like a, a resource that requires that deserves more attention among, in French. To be honest, like while ten thousand subscribers is a lot, it's a lot of people. You know, her videos get five hundred views, eight hundred views. Like, it's such a good resource for learners. So I am a huge, huge fan of her. If you want to do further, further um, research on a lot of the strategies she uses in her teaching in her videos. She uses a lot of TPRS, I'll type it up here. TPRS, teaching, like the TPRS teaching method. It's teaching, through, teaching, proficient, teaching proficiency through reading and storytelling. Uh, a lot of people swear by this particular methodology. I'm not gonna go through it today. It's, it's a, that's a rabbit hole of its own. But um, there's a lot of great TPRS resources and teaching strategies you can use in classes too. And she's definitely got some TPRS tendencies in her in her videos, and it's really, really, really good. Um, here we have headbands. Uh, maybe we'll, I'm going to take you through this at the end, actually. Um, we'll do that later. OK, this is great for teaching online, a really good resource for teaching online. I'm going to demo this here for you. Let's create a class. Great. So once you've created a class, you're going to be get it. You're going to you're going to get a link. Copy the link here. I'll just pretend to be a student. You give it to the students. You can have multiple students if you want to. Again, ideal probably for online classes in person. Maybe I'm sure there's some uses in person, but definitely online. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, let me go to a different browser here. Um, hang on a second. Basically, here, here's what I'll do. Let me share a different screen with you. And uh, stop screen share. Let's share this one over here. Okay, here we go. Let's share that. Okay, so when someone goes to the link, it loads, there we go. They're gonna, this is what the student will see, okay? At the top, they'll see the teacher's name, Azarin, which is me. They'll type their name, let's put George. They click join, and they get a whiteboard. Now, when they draw on this whiteboard, blah, 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 blah. Let's say they write some things on here, too. Hello. Hello. Right. Everything they do on here, um, I can see as well. So if we go back to the other, uh, we're going to have to toggle screens a little bit here. Hopefully, that's OK. We go back to my teacher screen. Uh, so where's my teacher screen? Here it is. Share screen. Whiteboard. There we go. When we go back to my teacher screen, I can see what George has written, right? George can also see my whiteboard. So if I want to write some things on here, hi, George. George would see this on his screen too. He can see this and he can see my whiteboard. Super useful tool. I like it a lot. You can play Pictionary. You can do, you can like do listening comprehension where you like say something and they have to like try writing what you said. You can use this for a wide variety of things. Love this. This is whiteboard.fi. Big fan of it. Okay. 
Now, this one here, I can't play the video because I'm sure there's some copyright things around that, but I put this here so I don't forget. I'll do this at the end as well, actually. Whoopsies. Let's do this at the end. Um, put this at the end. Uh, this game's only... F uh, you could play it with kids. Um, you could play it definitely for adults. Kids, you have to filter through the cards and pick out some that are appropriate because it's some cards are inappropriate for children. It's a game called Prostitution. I actually own the game. Maybe I'll show you that one at the end too because I actually own it so I can show you a hard copy of it. Okay, this is Padlet. Padlet is... Uh, I haven't found a great use for it as of yet, but it's it's def this definitely got some good things. You know, for online learning, even in classroom, I think there's some different uses for it. Um, basically, you can create a message, like kind of like a sticky note board like this, and you can send this to students, and students can then type in their own stuff, and you can see what they type. You can they can see what you type. Um, I was using this in an online class where I had two other students group class, and they were like both working in here and brainstorming at the same time. I, again, I'm not sure. With time, I'm going to use this more and see what the uses are for it, but I'm sure there's some good things on it. Um, this one here is great for more beginner students. I, it's used for journaling. I like to make students journal. So there's some very simple, organized by grade level. Grade 1 are simple topics. Grade 12 are obviously more complex. And there's some simple writing topics. You can give them journaling assignments based on topics on here. You could even use this for conversation topics. Similar to this website here, which we already looked at, you can use it in a similar way. But the difference on this website is that it's a lot simpler. These are much easier topics versus this website has some much more complex topics. So I tend to use this one for more beginners and the other one for I use for more advanced intermediates. OK, last online one. And then I'm going to show you a couple things like that I actually own. This is a game called Scribble. I play it online. It's an online game. You can't really do it in person. You can create a private room, or you can play with randoms. Um, I'll show you how this works. You can play different languages too, which is cool. Um, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you with just playing with randoms to start. Of course, an advertisement. For as long as there have been residents of the prairies, just okay. There we go. It's Pictionary. So these are random people. They're all drawing stuff. I have to try and guess what they drew. Sick. Chicken pox. You, guess what, you try and guess what it is, right? Pimples, acne. You try and guess what the word is, right? And you're playing with other people. And you can play this in other languages. So it's pretty cool. Um, I really like this game a lot. I've played it before. Um, you can create a private room. So if you don't want to play with randoms, you only want to play with your students, you just you just send them this link here. You send it to them. They can then join. You can even make custom words. So you only play with words that you've selected. So it's a great way to practice specific vocabulary words. Um, or you can just leave it blank, and it'll select random words that you play with with, the, with your students. So love this resource. OK. Let me show you, let me stop the screen share. I'm going to show you a couple things that I actually own, so I don't need to show the, the website. Um, so this game is Christitution. I've played it before. Again, for adults, you can pick any card. For kids, you're going to have to like cycle through and only find the appropriate ones. Every single card has a question on it that starts with, how much money would it take me to? And then it's got some hypothetical situation. Um, so for example, here you got, how much money would it take me to be trapped in an empty, windowless room for five days with the youngest player? And then you discuss. And then the other person, people to try and guess, like, how much money would you have to pay such and such person to do so? And there's lots of different cards. Some of them are not very child friendly. Some of them are kind of family friendly. So you might have to cycle through depending on if you're teaching kids or adults. But it's a good little game. The other game, uh, what else did I have here? I had that one. Uh, headbands is a great game. I've got it here. Headbands, you get a bunch of cards that have... Uh, oh, sorry, going back a step. For Prostitution, if you don't own the game, you can actually just make up your own cards. You can be like, how much money would it take me to 
whatever. How much and you can make up your own, just take, you know, you, in fact, what you can even do is you can even Google it as I'm talking out loud. You can even Google it. And I'm sure someone's compiled an interesting list of questions like that. And you can probably make your own. You don't even have to buy the game if you don't want to. I used to, before I owned this game, I would just make them up myself and I would just make them up. And that's how we play games like that. And then I found this game and I bought it for 20 bucks. So the other one is headbands. There's a bunch of cards with different pictures on them. Um, there's a lot you can do with them. I've done a lot. You can have things like someone selects a card. They have to describe the card so others can guess. I've done it the other way where you see the card, everybody sees the card, but I don't see the card and you all have to give me hints about the card. I've done, I've just used it as flashcards before. Really, really good resource. Again, if you don't own headbands, well, all you need to do is you have to Google flashcards. Like let's say in here, there's a lot of foods. There's a lot of food words. You might say food, flashcards, English. Food, flashcards, Spanish. Food, flashcards, Mandarin. And lots of people have put together flashcards. You can print out, cut out, and there you go. You've got headbands for free. So headbands is a great one. Uh, what else did I have here? Prostitution, uh, headbands, we did that one. Scribble, we did that. Oh, yes. Um, you know what, actually? Let me think about this. Um, there's one more resource that, yeah, let's, why not? Let's do it right now. The last one, oh, sorry, last two. Okay, we'll do these two and then we'll we'll wrap it up and we'll get into a kind of our Q&A and uh, Q&A and discussion portion, which is not recorded. So two more, one of which I just realized is in my room. So I might have to move my laptop and move, go with, you might have to come with me to my room. Um, the other one I can demonstrate. So this is more of a demonstratable one. Um, Basically, and I'm going to put, there's a YouTube video of this being done. So I'm going to put the YouTube link for you guys, but I'll demonstrate it right now. I'll do a very fast demo. This is a great way to start teaching students how to recognize, it's a game or activity rather, in person or online, both work, where you're teaching students to recognize certain words and phrases and improve their listening comprehension, regardless of level, by the way. Could be really, could be like they walk into a class and they know zero in a language, or it could be they're reasonably advanced and you want to kind of um, improve upon that. I think it probably skews a bit more towards the beginners, but it could be adapted. It could definitely be adapted for more advanced learners as well. I haven't personally done it for advanced learners, but even as I'm thinking now, I'm getting ideas of how I would do it. So let me demo this game for you. Everybody watching, you're my students. So I'm going to teach you some Let's make it, uh, let's say, uh, French. We'll just do it in French, okay? So here we go. Let's pretend you speak no French. You're all beginners. This is your day one of French. So do what I do. Copy me, okay? So you're going to listen. Even if you don't understand, just, just do what I do. Um, uh, Levé. No, actually, let's see. What do I want to do? Let's do beginner. You know, let's do it in English, actually. We'll do this in English. Why not Why not in English? That way everybody actually understands what I'm saying. So you're all beginner English learners. You don't speak a word of English. You don't know what I'm saying. So if you don't understand, just copy what I do. Okay? Raise your hand. Put your hand down. Raise your hand. Put your hand down. Raise your hand. Put your hand down. Raise your left hand. Raise your right hand. Put your left hand down. Put your right hand down. Stand up. Sit down. So you're giving commands of stuff that they can do. You're also doing them. And gradually, as they start to get the patterns of like, oh, raise your hand means this, raise your hand means this, stand up means this, sit down means this, blah, 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 blah. As they start to learn those and they start to, you can see that they start to understand the patterns and what things mean. Um, once they start to get that, then what you start to do is you start to delay, you start to say it, you still raise your hand, you still stand up, but you wait five seconds before doing so. You wait and you let them try and figure out what you said and let them do it by themselves. If after five seconds you're still struggling, 
you still do whatever motion, turn your head, jump, spin, you know, you, you still do that motion um, and you still do it. And I'm a really, really big fan of that activity. Um, you can have a lot of fun with it. You can make people like crawl on their hands and knees. You can make people scream if it's kids. You, like you can really do all sorts of funny things. You can, you can make it a lot of fun. You can make them like spin 10 times. You can teach numbers like that. There's so many things you could teach by just by adjusting your commands, right? You adjust your commands and that immediately you can teach different concepts with it. Like if I want to teach numbers, I might say jump one time, jump two times, jump three times, run for five seconds if you've got some space. Um, uh, whatever. Um, you know, give your partner a, a four high fives. One, two, three. <laughs> There's so many things you can do, right? So really, really good um Really, really good game. Now, the last one, uh, it's upstairs. Uh, let, I'll take you with me. Come with me. I'll just take you. No, they all try. It's okay. The last one, you guys have probably played it. Many of you probably have. It's a pretty uh, simple game. Most people, it's a kind of a, a game you see pretty frequently. Um, There we go. Can you see that? Thank you, Jan. Jenga. What you do on the Jenga pieces is you write a number on each piece. So you can see on this one there's a number. You number them to one. I think it's one to 52. Right? This one's number four. You number them off, and each number gets a question. Right? Some kind of get to know you question. Or maybe you could adjust the question. Some people have already done this. If you Google conversation Jenga, You'll get lots of people who've compiled questions already for it. Um, and it's a great kind of like little conversation conversation game. So anyway, I could do this for hours. I've got so many games and resources that I use. So maybe we'll wrap up the recorded portion right now. So thank you uh, for the people watching the recording. Thank you for watching. And then um, if you guys want to join live ever, I'll put a link in the description so you can join live. And yeah, let's get to our discussion and Q&A portion. Here we go.